Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I look a little peaked. I look a little pale. When I wear navy blue, Paul, I look a little pale, but we kind of match today. You got on purple and I got on blue. Well, I've, I've been out in the sun, too, so <laughs> you that does make been. a difference. You, did you take a little trip, a fishing trip or something, or what did you do with your kids? No, we actually got a chance to, to sneak away. So with Will's schedule, we didn't know. We knew he had the week of July 4th off, but mm -hmm. he had classes, so we, we bolted down to the beach for for a couple of days. Okay, can't, can't blame you one bit. Can't blame you one bit. <laughs> now we've been talking recently about what's going on in the world, and one of the one of the bad things we've talked about this week was the movie that came out about sex trafficking. Oh, Sound of Freedom. Yes. Sound of Freedom. Everybody, please go and see that. Please use your discretion at who you take with you to see it. But it is so real, it is so amazing that Hollywood fought this for how many years? They fought it for five years from what I understand. I've actually been listening to, to I can't pronounce his last name, Jim, um, anyway, it's on there. <laughs> yeah, The one guy that names. produced it. But, uh, you know, it's unbelievable how much pushback that... that um, and why did that they the get that? Had. They got that because... Well, I mean, you know, the question I ask is... is, is the truth will is stand when why? everything fails? Truth yeah. will stand when everything fails, but why does somebody try to hide information? Why does somebody push back against something? And do you... Make your own conclusions. I'm, we're not going to give away the movie, but the person who brings these children in, brings these children in, is a beautiful woman that would be greatly respected. You know, I've actually not seen the movie well, yet. Our schedule's I'm not, not allowed I'm to not going to tell you who it is, but when you, you'll be like, what? What? This is a woman who would be greatly respected, who showed up at your door and complimented your children and wanted to help your children, wanted to get them in a program, wanted them to do this. She would say, oh, how precious of her to do that. Yeah. Not precious at all. Not precious at all. She did it for the money. Follow the money. Yeah. And the children, six times a day, $10,000 per child. Follow the money. You're kidding. No. Follow the money. It and, and the children that were rescued, I think 50 at a time were rescued, 50 when they did the sting, and they saved children. I'm getting cold chills. It, it, the people that were there to abuse these children were everyday guys, everyday folks that you might mm -hmm. shake hands with every day on the street. And you're like, are you kidding me? These children go and see this movie, support this movie, listen to the truth. It is a true movie, and it truly is about the freedom of children, the freedom of children. And, and they saved all these children, but there are thousands, thousands who died and were actually, this is in the movie, but it's, it's so grotesque. When the child is no longer useful to them, they sell organs. Well, yeah, and then that gets into the adrenochrome, and and you know, and there there's a it's unbelievable so sad. movement it's to try so to sad. discredit that and consider it a conspiracy theorist, but it's theory, no. but it's 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 not from no. the evidence that's out there. No, no. And it's but heartbreaking it's, because you know you look at you look at the pressure that's the propaganda that's been against the movie. Mm -hmm. you, you go the ratings, you know, all of these media that control. So are, are they that connected across the board? Are people that wretched that they'll sell well, their soul for? for mm -hmm. I mean, it appears that they are. Mm -hmm. It appears, that, it appears they are. that they are. And but then it, you look at what's coming out of, you know, Disney, for example. I mean, we came out with a report. There is a pushback against Disney now. Oh, yeah. I mean, their traffic is down oh, yeah. dramatically. Oh, no, yeah. I and wouldn't, I'm a, wouldn't spend a dime there. I was no, a I'm sorry. huge fan of Raiders of the Lost Ark years mm -hmm. ago, but they've so destroyed by pushing an agenda mm -hmm. on people instead of telling the stories. It's your choice. Right? Yeah. Like, like, instead of telling the story the way that the author created the story, they're mm -hmm. trying to push this agenda, and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm done. I, right. I, like, I used to like going to the movies. Oh, man. Lady and the anymore. Tramp. I can remember my mama taking me to my first Disney movie, Lady and the Tramp. I was a little bitty girl, and it was the sweetest movie. As my children grew up, they watched Lady and the Tramp. Yeah. As my children grew up, they all watched Fox and the Hound. They all, you know, there was so much good back mm -hmm. then, but somebody got involved who turned it around 
and um, it's very sad for the world and, and we need to all get together and pray for this world because our world is not as it was. We were talking about proper dressing for women and the day I met my mother-in-law, God love her so, sweet Christian woman, read the Bible every day, loved her beyond the world. She was just amazing. The day I met her, and Evelyn had on a jumpsuit, and this is what brought this out that day. She had on a jumpsuit, and it was really cute. And I said, oh, my gosh, they're back in style, aren't they? I had a white jumpsuit. I was 17, y'all. This is how long this has been. And it had a hole in the back about this big that was between my neck and my bra strap. And it had a hole. But my soon-to-be mother-in-law did not think that was appropriate for me to wear in front of her husband. So before I got out of, I got out of my car and she was standing there talking to me and she said, Sugar, let me get you a shirt to put on. <laughs> and so I put a shirt on over before I went in her house. That was what was appropriate for our days then. That was what was appropriate. I wish we still appropriately dressed. I wish we still appropriately. I saw some <clears throat> young ladies that had on short, short, short shorts. <laughs> Did you get it? Short, way too short. And they were like 13, 14, mm -hmm. and I thought, y'all are asking for trouble. Mm -hmm. You're asking for trouble. There is an appropriate something because then people, you know, and honestly, I can't even describe what you could see, but you could see. And I was like, oh my gosh, if my daughters had tried to go out of the house like that, I'd have choked them out. They'd have never got to go anywhere. We are not living as we once did, we're not living as a, as a sane family, you know, where everything, it just, it's different. Nanny Baker would die if she came back to life right now because if she thinks covering my back up, she'd die. <laughs> she'd die. <laughs> well, and it's not working in society either. I mean, no. you look at, you look at the, the level of suicide, depression, drug addiction that's taking place in our society now. You look at the just the sheer lack of hope. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. What we're doing is not working. Did what, your children? What we're doing is not producing good fruit. We have to judge our society by the fruit that it's producing, and it's not good. Mm -hmm. Did your children feel threatened by other people's success, or did they reach their own goals? And they were. I would think your children would be self-sufficient and and able to reach their own goals without judging themselves of, against other people. Well, I mean, in society today, that's a hard thing to do. It is hard. And, I, and I've tried, I mean, I, I would say we all struggle with it from time to time, but, you know, what I tried to raise the kids to and what I try to remind myself is, is, you know, you've got a path before you and you have to do everything that you do as unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And you have to make sacrifices in the short run to be successful in the long run because mm -hmm. what's important is standing the test of time. Mm -hmm. And... You know, like the Bible says, the righteous, their lives are like the sunrise. It gets brighter and brighter to midday. You know, of course, we diminish in our, our life as we go down. But if you're living that correctly, then, yeah, you're going to have troubles. You're going to mm -hmm. have overcomes. The Bible talks about Job and what he went through. There's testing. Mm -hmm. But I always try to point to the kids, you know, don't judge yourself by someone else. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. find what it is that you're good at. Mm -hmm. Learn that a lot from Jordan Peterson. Mm -hmm. Find what it is that you're good at and pour yourself into it and ask the Lord to bless, bless your efforts and look at where you're going. Don't look at where everybody mm -hmm. else is. Well, did your kid, this is so strange. This is going back to when I was 14 years old. I was in Atlanta visiting my grandmother. Every summer we would go visit my grandmother. And I got a call from one of my best friends in Orlando. And she said, oh my gosh, she said, did you get your Weijins yet? And I said, what? Weijins? Yeah. And I said, huh? Well, I didn't, I didn't act like I didn't know what they were. I said, no, but we'll get them before school starts. But there was nowhere to Google what are Bass Weegians. Bass, bass. Weegians are oh, penny loafers. Okay. But they are, ex they are certain penny loafers. When I went to school, you couldn't stand on the patio with the end kids if you didn't wear Capizios, Papagallos, and Bass <laughs> Weegians. And so I was in Atlanta at Granny's, and Granny was poor as a church mouse. She's the reason I went to work at 14 years old because I wanted to buy things that I couldn't get otherwise. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I remember when Karen called me and said, did you get your Weegians? And I said, no, but I went before school started. And I hung up the phone, <laughs> I was in a crisis because I thought, I don't even know what she's talking about. 
I lived in Orlando in College Park. We shopped at Adrian's Dress Shop. We wore very nice clothes. I only got them when they were on sale, but mother always tried to. Nobody knew that part of my clothes came from Goodwill. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew that I had that outfit that Thurman Jack had on the cover of Seventeen magazine, but it's because my mother had to save for three months to buy it. It mm -hmm. wasn't that we could afford it, but mama was really good about making sure that we had things. In today's world, I watch kids walk in school and I'm going, oh my gosh, your mama let you out of the house with that. <laughs> but they buy clothes with holes in it. They buy and they wear these exposing shirts. What happened to the dress code? Is there a dress code now? I think there, is there a dress code? There is a dress code. It's my understanding there's a dress code. It's just a little different than what it used to be. It must we were going be. School. It must so, be. Um, but yeah, there's not much modesty at the beach anymore. No, <laughs> it's no, been a couple no, years no, since we've no. been. I was shocked. Well, speaking of modesty, um, did you by chance watch the parade with the nude gentleman? No, I saw some. I, I saw some <sighs> some reports on it, and and I'm going to tell you that I, happened. That really happened in the street with children standing there. Okay, here's here's the growing up in the North Georgia mountains of me. If me and my I would have been in jail if I'd have walked by and my daughter and my younger kids were to experience that because mm -hmm. I would have, I would have probably resorted to violence because mm -hmm. I don't know that there's any other way. And it's not, this wouldn't have been a hate crime issue. It would what have been. What was the purpose in what I don't, they did? I don't under just hey look at me, I'm special and and you know we can. Sorry. You as society are tolerating the removal of any boundaries of how we want to behave. Right. If you want to live that lifestyle, that's fine. We have mm -hmm. freedom in America. Mm -hmm. Don't shove it down my throat. But don't shove it down my throat. Don't mm -hmm. push it. Don't get in front of the children because, you know, there was a time where, what, I remember back when we were in college, somebody came through the and flashed and a bunch flashed. of, oh, you know, they yeah, flashed a, a bunch thing. of women. Yeah. They, they chased them down and they mm -hmm. uh, They usually had them. on a trench coat and it was a big yeah. deal and it was over in two seconds and you're like, oh, that's all you got? Right. So apparently <laughs> yeah. that's been a thrill that people have gotten throughout history. So it's nothing new, but now today we're deciding, oh, because you consider yourself special in this area and the government's trying to shove this down our throat, mm -hmm. and I believe it's a part of grooming children to a, a, a certain lifestyle, mm -hmm. which is absolutely mm -hmm. evil, um, that you're going to force society to see this. Yeah. And, and yeah. we're tolerating yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. that that's, that's the worst part is we're tolerating it because yeah. most people... Most people can't define that line of, hey, if that's the lifestyle you want to live, that's fine, mm -hmm. but here's a boundary that you can't cross. Mm -hmm. Right, um, right. And and that scares me because I am, uh, you know, with Xana, with Riker, with these little ones coming up, it is terrifying to me. It is absolutely terrifying. And I just, um, I don't know what to do to explain it to them. I don't, I guess I don't have the sense about me to say, Things are appropriate, things are not appropriate. It's just like, we should all eat healthier, but we don't, right. you know. I mean, we went to Mike's and had chocolate cake, and you're going to get to see a picture of Xana now eating. <laughs> but, but we, you know, there are certain things that make our health better. We walk, we drink water, we do all these things. But then sometimes we do a stupid thing, we eat a half of a chocolate cake. Not that I did that, but, but I, I could. But... I do on my birthday every yeah. year. I don't yeah, eat yeah. chocolate cake much, but when it's my birthday, I'll drink you a half do. a gallon of milk and a half of chocolate cake. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm sick of it till yeah, my birthday yeah, the next yeah, year. Yeah, But we have to set the boundaries for our children, but then they go out into the world and there are no boundaries, Paul. There are no boundaries. No, and, and, it, and it makes, as, as parents, you have to prepare your children to be ready for the world. You can't protect them for the world. You have to... You, you have to, as best you can, prepare them to be able to make those hard decisions when it comes forward because the, the, the sheer level of temptation that, that we Sad. face and the things that are accepted that are, that are historically proven sins, you know, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. are, that, that don't lead to good fruit in your life is mm -hmm. something that's accepted as a part of society today. Right, and right. That's, that's that's a degradation, but it gets back to that. I think I've talked about this several times before. You know, when I read the Bible front to back the first time, I was like, boy, those Israelites, they're a bunch mm -hmm. of idiots. Like, I was very judgmental. And the reason being is, you know, God blesses them, and their society does great, and then they turn away from the Lord, and they turn away from those teachings, and, 
and, and what we know to be good moral values, mm -hmm. and then they suffer the consequences mm -hmm. of that. So hard times lead to good men and women. Good times lead to weak men and women, which is where we are right now. I mean, mm -hmm. you got to think about that. I mean, how how degraded do you need to be to be so excited to run around naked in front of a bunch of kids? I mean, it's our responsibility to protect that next generation. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, let's take a look at the other side. You've got a whole generation where you've got the baby boomers who have been in charge, mm -hmm. okay? And they are leaving so much debt for their own instant gratification here in the, mm -hmm. in, in the short run that there is, it's highly unlikely that their grandchildren are going to be able to experience the level of prosperity and freedom that they had in the future because they're not, they're not making decisions, they're not standing up against their peers that are in control. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at it. I mean, mm -hmm. all of your major individuals have, have been in office for quite some time. They're right. right at the leading edge of the baby boomer population. And you baby boomers are the largest voting bloc. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you're allowing this to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Fiscal Responsibility Act, okay, yeah, it may be great. It may kick the, the, the can down the road, may save a recession here in the short run, but the level of debt that we're leaving our, our, our children and grandchildren mm -hmm. is burdensome. It is. Scary. Okay, it is burdensome. And what it ends up being is the Bible is clear about that because you can look at, at the Bible from a couple of ways. One, it's God's Word, but also it's, it's all the wisdom that we've learned throughout history that we put in there. If you want to look at from the other side, you can't deny the wisdom that's there. The borrower is servant to the lender. Mm -hmm. And our generations are going to be servants to a, 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 to a burden that their forefathers made before them. Yeah. And, you know, there, there, there will be an answering that's going to have to occur for that generation. And unfortunately, they've reaped all the benefits at this point, and they're leaving all of the pain for their future generations. Because the only way we get out of it is deflation and collapse mm -hmm. or inflation, right? You don't know when it's going to happen, but, but people don't understand how severe I mean, people understand a little bit how severe inflation is right now because you've experienced it at, at the grocery store. You've experienced oh it when you try to buy a car. You've experienced oh my it gosh. When, you, when you try <laughs> yeah. to buy yeah. a house. Just wait because the insurance companies are struggling right now. How much your premiums are going to go up. Mm -hmm. And then the governments are spending more money, so your taxes are going to go up. That's minor inflation. That's not hyperinflation. Mm -hmm. But when the system breaks, if we end up in hyperinflation, there's everybody's going to suffer pain. Mm -hmm. But that younger generation is going to suffer a lot more than than the ones that have placed that burden on their grandkids. And the the sad thing is, we talked about this yesterday. I'm I'm like the last old generation that knows how to can, knows how to garden, knows how to prepare and freeze and put up food. The baby boomers mm -hmm. didn't garden, they didn't can, they didn't, so that's already lost, you know, that's that's preserving, that's preserving our past and embracing mm -hmm. our future because our future needs to know how to garden. Our future, those children need to know, I'm going to teach Ansley how to cook collard greens because <laughs> we ate at Mike's Monday and that girl has talked about nothing but collard greens ever since. She said, well, they have collard greens today. And I said, no, they have them on Monday. Well, why don't they have them every day? <laughs> I don't know, but I'll teach you how to make them. There are certain things that it, it, I think it's our duty as parents, as grandparents, as moms, as dad, teach your kids to be self-sufficient. Teach them to go when it's collard season and buy three or four bushels of collards and put them up in the freezer, cook them, get them ready, put them in the freezer. Let's do for ourselves instead of asking for handouts. Right. Ever thought of that? Right. right. That would be just a great idea to teach that generation that we can, you know, we can grow a garden. Even if you have a small garden, you can have a container garden. Evelyn gave me tomatoes that came out of her container garden. <clears throat> so it's not, it's not too late, mm -hmm. but we got to get to work at it now, like right now. Well, we've got to start focusing on what's important, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and what's important instead of what is temporary. Mm -hmm. And wealth is great; it, it can provide comfort. It can't provide happiness. Mm -mm. No, no. But you know, family unity, relationships, working through um, 
learning to be less selfish mm -hmm. and because we're all inherently selfish. I mean, yeah. you, you look at a two-year-old kid, you, know, you don't learn selfishness. That's a part of our, our, <laughs> our nature when we're born, but you yeah. have to train those kids to be able in there. A lot of people have really good intentions. And, you know, and the proverb says there's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. The other side of that, you know, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. hear that all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, people will think, hey, you know, it's like parents will go out of their way to do more for their children with a good heart, mm -hmm. with an absolutely pure heart. Mm -hmm. But the question is, are you training that child to be sufficient on their own? That's our responsibility yep. as yep. parents. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Well, speaking of children, <coughs> today is Victoria, our beautiful Victoria's daddy's birthday. <laughs> and I had to laugh about this because he came into my life as a 16-year-old kid who took my daughter on a date and he had on black leather pants, and I will never forget it he because J.S. Martin <laughs> said, who is that boy she's leaving with? And I said, that's Siggy Taylor. So happy birthday to Siggy Taylor. He came in with black leather pants on and his, I think it was a Camaro or Trans Am. I, I can't can remember. see Siggy wearing black one of, leather one pants. One of those cars, yeah. and he had a head full of hair. And he it always was, dresses dapper. Yeah, it was so, it was so cool. And JS was like, "Well, who is he?" And I said, "Well, he lives at Bent Tree." And I started describing. Him. Well, I, I don't know anything about him. Do you? <laughs> no. So ask who ask who your kids are going out with. I can happily say, thirty eight years later, he has been the best dad in the world. He He's was. A good um, dad. He is. He adores his daughter, and I'm so very very thankful for that. So happy happy birthday to the not so black leatherish Siggy. Today he's a health nut. He rides his bicycle all the time. He, he you know, he's just, he, yeah, he's, he's a good dad and I'm very thankful that Tori got a really, really good dad. So not all kids were blessed to have a good dad. So No, that's yeah, becoming, yeah. that's becoming more rare in today's it is, society. Sadly it is. Yeah. Now we've got a few pictures I wanna share today. And these pictures might show you a little bit of Zanna Jordan because, you know, we take her to lunch and we feed her vegetables. She's 11 months old and she's eating off the table and she loves vegetables. We have found that it's easier to feed her at Mike's than it is to cook all this stuff. <laughs> this kid, and she is the hit at the restaurant. Everybody has to talk about her. Everybody has to speak to her. They love this baby and she loves their food. So get your kids eating healthy, eating vegetables. This time of year when you're gardening, cook some fresh green beans and she loves green beans. I mean, this kid would rather have green beans than a piece of chocolate cake. So she is just amazing. But what a happy, happy child. This is the generation that scares me. This is the generation that when we talk about the sex trafficking, we talk about the morality changing. We have to protect this generation. She is so precious, she is so beautiful, and she is so loved. And that is her, the first time she met Lydia, she just fell in love with Lydia. And it's because Lydia has this aura of goodness around her. Produce an aura of goodness around yourself and you will attract the good, don't attract the bad. And that's so important, so try to Try to attract the goodness and try to try to project the goodness and uh, I think it changes your life. Now, the other day I was bragging about this guitar and I cannot remember this young man's name to save my life, but he's about 30 years old, lives out near Big Creek. He made this guitar. Now, it just still blows my mind and when I saw the back of this, I, I think it was mahogany wood, but he stained it and it's just so detailed blue. It's like blue and baby blue, and so it's going to be used in a new video that's going to be produced very soon. Look at that wood, y'all. That's wood that he colored that way. I don't know how he did this. It is absolutely amazing to me, but what a talent from right here in Gilmer County, and I'm just like, who can do that? Who has enough sense to do that? There's no way. There's that's just gorgeous. no way. Isn't that gorgeous? That's There's gorgeous. no way I could ever do that. And nobody, no way anybody could do it. That's but a talent this, this always kid, He's, he's an auto mechanic by trade or he sells parts or something like that. But this is what he does for fun. But I, I would say that is just amazing. And uh, what, a, what an honor to be able to use that in the next video. It's gonna be really, really cool. So. That's an example of doing what you're good at. <clears throat> I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Now this, I gotta remind y'all, the Pickens County Progress today 
has two of our banana pudding recipes in it. That's one that I did last week. I used Granny's old recipe, which is the way I make it. And then I did the easy, busy housewives recipe that I created years ago because I didn't have time to do all that stuff. And they're both gonna be in the progress today. So pick up a copy of the progress and you will get my recipes weekly. I put one or two recipes in there and they're always something fun. So do that. Now, can I read something? This is be the best at whatever you are. Hmm. If you can't be a pine on the top of the hill, be a shrub in the valley but be the best little shrub this side of the hill. Be a bush if you cannot be a tree. If you can't be a bush, be a bit of the grass. Some highway happier make. If you can't be a musky, then just be a bass, but the liveliest bass in the lake. We can't all be captains, we've got to be crew. There's something for all of us here. There's big work to do and there's lesser to do. And the task we must do is the near. If you can't be a highway, then just be a trail. If you can't be the sun, be a star. It isn't by size that you will, that you win or you fail. Be the best at whatever you are. So whatever you are, this young man who produced that guitar doesn't make a living doing that, but he produced the most amazing guitar. Mm -hmm. And he, he set out to do that. And I'm like, are you kidding me? If you write poetry, if you write music, if you be the best that you can be. You know, whatever, whatever, whatever works for you. Whatever you set your hand to, mm -hmm. do it to the best of your ability. That's it. That's it. And that's what people don't understand. You know, they go into work and they're like, "Well, I'm not getting paid enough, or yeah. I'm not in." The I'm going to get in I, my eight hours. Yeah. I'm not in the position that I want to be. <clears throat> And that mindset just destroys their life. And then they spend the rest of their life, uh, you know, going, well, why am I passed over mm -hmm. for this opportunity? Or why does, you know, why am I not progressing? And at any point in our lives, we can determine, today I decided to do whatever I put my hand to, I'm going to do my best. And mm -hmm. if I fail, I fail, but I'm going to do it with an open heart and a pure heart. And I'm going to mm -hmm. feel the pain of failure, but I'm going to pick myself up and I'm going to try again from a faith base to ask the Lord to bless your efforts mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and go in that direction. And if if we will live our lives that way, we will be excellent in everything we do. We may not be the CEO of the company, but uh, everybody's designed mm -hmm. to be the CEO mm -hmm. of the company. But you'll be respected by your peers and you'll be sought out by your competitors to be hired. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. that. And in today's world, if you are good, put yourself out there and let people see the goodness in you. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you knew this or not, but when we started Appalachian Memories God, 40 years ago, um, it was because my daughter was a wonderful floral designer. I can't tie a bow, but she, is a, she was amazing. She was such a great floral designer. And, and she said, well, why don't we do some craft shows? Why don't we do this? Well, we were doing a craft show and I barely did enough to pay the booth rent. And then the next craft show, we made more. And then the next craft show, we made more, but we didn't stop with the one that we barely made the booth rent. We said, we'll do it again, we'll do it again, we'll do it again. We did it over and over and over. And then one day, we were in Gatlinburg. It was a cruddy show. The weather was bad. The sales weren't good. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And so I told my crew, I said, you know, we've tried this for a year. Maybe it's not going to work. That day, a buyer from Kroger picked up my business card, looked at our product, called me. Within two days, I was in Nashville meeting with Kroger, and the rest is history. And their first order was $12,347. <laughs> so don't give up. Don't give up. And no. today, $12,347 would be like $20,000 today yeah. or $40,000 today. So don't give up. If you love something, follow your dream and do it best. I have a friend whose husband committed suicide. She makes the most amazing jewelry. And, and he used to make knives and she made jewelry and they did things together. She was left alone. And now she's doing it herself, but she does, she writes music, she sings. Mm. She is so talented. She didn't give up because her life changed drastically right. in such a sad, sad way. And she just, she's a great grandmother, she's a great friend, she's a great person. She didn't give up and I, and I think we all we all have to do that. We have to, it's hard. To. It's hard. It is hard. And quite frankly, you know, you, you, you know the strength and character of an individual, not when everything's easy and success mm -hmm. is there all mm -hmm. the time. It's when 
you get smacked in the face, mm -hmm. you get knocked down, mm -hmm. and you, you're dazed, you're confused, and you get up and dig in again. Yeah. I, that's one of the reasons I love you so much. And, and you're like, that you didn't really happen to me, but yeah, it did. You got smacked, yeah, I was going to say, you I've got been smacked, smacked down I've been so smacked much. down, yeah, too. Yeah, and it's yeah. humbling, it's yeah, humbling, yeah, but I it, think sometimes it's the greatest yeah. blessing that the Lord can give someone. Well, I have a friend who does comedy, and, and I've been giving her some lines that we've come <laughs> up with, and she just dies she does stand-up comedy and she said you're so funny and I said but this really happened this really happened this really happened this really happened and I was telling somebody the jet ski story yesterday it really happened you know life really happens and you it just does. have to say I'm not going to give up I'm not going to give in I've almost given in and I refuse to do no. that I'm just not going to do it so don't give up don't give in um summer is here get out and see the beautiful mountains we're going to share a video in just a few minutes we're going to go to a commercial and then we're going to share a video that we did in ball ground if you have not been to ball ground georgia please come and visit our restaurants downtown are great we have so many wonderful places to go mm -hmm. from the free botanical garden to the free walking trail just so much happening in this it's a small city but it is growing and it is growing in the right direction because it's bringing in people who want the lifestyle we have. They mm -hmm. want the country living. They want their children to feel safe. They want to walk to the park with their kids. So get out and get to know if you live in LJ, if you live in Blue Ridge, get out and to know the, the city that you've chosen to live in and um, find out the good things about it. And there are many good things. So Tim did a, a really cute video and we're going to share that with you in just a few minutes, but we're going to take a commercial break now. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella J, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meat, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? The mountains are calling and they're closer than you think. Farmers Crossing and Ball Ground offers creekside lots with homes beginning in the 400s. Walking distance to downtown shopping, dining, tennis courts, Calvin Farmer Park and local events. It also includes a beautiful hike to Long Swamp Creek. Leave the car and the worries behind. Move in by fall 2023. Call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Hi, I'm Ryan Blaney, a third generation race car driver. And we dedicate a lot of our time to going as fast as possible. But when my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it was a very unexpected bump in the road for us. It's important to notice if older family members are acting differently, experiencing problems with their memory, or having trouble with routine tasks. Early detection of Alzheimer's can give your family time to explore support services, make a plan for the future, and access available treatments. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece, or just making memories, writing a great American novel, or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge.
now. I love that video. That I love good. I love representing the tiny towns that we serve from Ball Ground to Turtle Town. Get out today and take some photos and, and do yourself a video of your tiny town. There are so many beautiful places that people don't see. If you, I had lunch at Laura May's yesterday and I just have to tell you, my mama made good meatloaf, I make good meatloaf. Laura May's has, man, they've hit a home run. Their meatloaf is fantastic. I had meatloaf and slaw and it was so good. It was You're so gonna good. give me a hard time. I've never made a meatloaf I liked. Oh no, I love meatloaf. It's like my, oh, Most I love people it. do, I've never on liked meatloaf. On my deathbed, I want a meatloaf sandwich. <laughs> so yeah, 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 yeah. Well, what's going on with the economy? Tell me what's happening. Well, you know, the, the stock market's been absolutely on fire this year. Mm -hmm. Um, we're still not back to all-time highs, but it looks close. It's been interesting, though, because the largest majority of the gains, the markets are cap-weighted. Without getting into all the explanation on that, the larger you are, the larger percentage you have there. So you've got basically seven stocks that that accounted for the largest majority of the gains. The are they surprising stocks or something that we would assume would do well? They call them the Magnificent Seven, so it's okay. Apple. Meta, which is Go or Meta, Facebook, you know, Google, mm -hmm, Alphabet, mm -hmm. um, Nvidia, Tesla, and I'm missing somebody. Amazon. And Tesla is still doing good, huh? Yeah, surprisingly yeah. so. Yeah. It has. <laughs> I dropped something. <laughs> I, mean, I was looking. For. So, so anyway, that's been quite interesting. But, but, you know, this early in the year, there were more economists predicting a recession, and of course, you know, it made sense with interest rates moving. Mm -hmm. It was quite mm -hmm. uncertain, but the economy's holding up much better than anybody anticipated. And I think there's a combination of the factors behind. One, you've still got a tremendous amount of money that's sloshing around the system mm -hmm. from all the stimulus and just record money printing that took place during the COVID debacle. Mm -hmm. And um, then you've got the Fiscal Responsibility Act, and I'm sorry guys, but you know, Fiscal responsibility is not the correct name for this, but if you want to... Not at all. If you wanna, not at all. <laughs> if you want to be dishonest, it actually is, so yep. I guess that's the rule of politicians today. Speaking of dishonest, <laughs> but, yeah, a lot of that going yeah, on. Yeah, a lot of that going on. So, so anyway, but the reality is unemployment's holding up pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, inflation is starting to wear on individuals. We're starting to see some cooling off. You know, the, the inflation numbers yesterday, the CPI came in kind of as perfect as you can get. I mean, I don't necessarily agree with all the calculations that go in there, but it was the perfect environment where we're settling off into disinflation. If we can hold here, mm -hmm. okay, wages stay good and inflation stays good, then this may be surprisingly so, so the Goldilocks situation where we do not have a recession or we have a soft landing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't think that, you know, we've still got some inefficiencies in the economy that have to be worked out. So in 1998, you had the collapse of a company called Long-Term Capital Management. The Federal Reserve stepped in. That was the first ever real big bailout that took place. Now, by intervening, that kicked the can down the road for two more years. Markets went on to all-time high. Mm -hmm. 1999 was just an epic bubble that that didn't bop, pop until the year 2000. Of course, technology stocks from 2000, 2003, or the index went down close to 80%. S&P 500 went down close to 50. And that was what we call narrow leadership too. So there were a few number of stocks that were running the markets back then. So then of course, 2008, which is the big concern, you had Bear Stearns collapse in, in March of 2008. Mm -hmm. Uh, the government, you know, kind of stepped in at the time, told everybody everything was great. You had this good... Is that the same time all the bailouts happened? No, that wasn't when the bailouts okay. happened. Okay. This was before. Okay. So, but they intervened enough to kind of solidify the system, started talking like they did. And I can't remember exactly what they did when they intervened, but basically they did. So the markets were very optimistic and euphoric up until about July of 2008, right? I, I mean, you know, you had the Federal Reserve come I out remember. and say, hey, no recession on the uh, on the horizon, you know, things are going to be okay. And people were still, just like now, spending and spending and spending. And then things, you know, the market's corrected in August, which is not uncommon. You know, mm -hmm. typically July is a really good up month in the market. You tend to get a little bit of a correction in August, September. You start getting worried about what the economic numbers look like at the time. Probably going to have the same thing that will take place this year. But then you had Lehman Brothers collapse. I think it was September that Lehman Brothers collapsed, and then, of course, you had the big, massive decline. 
Now, if we do end up in a recession, I don't anticipate the type, you know, Wiley Coyote moment where the markets and everything just collapse like they did in 2008. If we do, because I think we have some inefficiencies, but all that money in the system, if, it unemplo if employment stays up and mm -hmm. stays reasonable, I think we probably see something closer to what we did from 2000 to 2002, where, where you have a corporate profits recession, markets come back to more sustainable, um, less speculative investing levels. You know, mm -hmm. right now you gotta speculate if you're gonna be putting new money into the market. It's hard to invest from a historical standpoint based on the prices that you're paying for a lot of these stocks. So you gotta be patient in this environment, but we'll see. I mean, we really don't know. I mean, we, we could get the perfect scenario where we don't have a recession. I still think it's a, 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 danger, you know, a dangerous time to be deploying new capital. Mm -hmm. um, if you're in, it's great. But um, we'll find out what things look like this fall because, you know, the Fed's risen, raised interest rates pretty dramatically. And so far it seems to be working and so far the economy seems to be holding up. I mean, there's, there's pockets where you're seeing trouble, mm -hmm. right? You know, if this was 2008 and you look at the traffic in, in Disney right now mm -hmm. and how much it's declined, you'd be like, oh, my gosh, you know, here we go. But the I question used to have is, some Disney stock, but no more. But, I, but based on what you're seeing, this is a pushback against that woke agenda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, on the other hand, you look at, the, at, at air travel. I think we just hit a record in air travel now. Mm -hmm. I mean, people are flying like crazy. Right. And, uh, and I don't think that's all businesses coming back. I think it's just people being able to go. Saying they want to go. Yeah. And something yeah. else that we're seeing that's different from what's happened in the past, okay? In the past, when when people would have earnings on their savings, right? So, I mean, you gotta figure, we went, spent 10 years, over 10 years at, at basically 0% interest rates. Mm -hmm. So if you had an emergency savings, a money market account, money that you needed to have safe and guaranteed, heck, even a CD was paying, what, 1% or less mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for quite some time. What we're seeing now is with higher interest rates, people are not saving those earnings, okay? They're spending them. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit different. So higher interest rates has actually provided a stimulus for a large part of the population, especially if you're retired, why not spend it, right? Mm -hmm. you've, you've cut back over the Best years to 1%. Best bumper sticker ever, I'm spending my children's inheritance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's actually. Enjoy life. Yeah, enjoy life. Uh, you, yeah. Want, you want to enjoy life, but yeah, you, you, yeah. Do to, no, you do want to yeah. try to kidding. take care of that next I'm generation. I'm just kidding, but, yeah. Well, I mean, I know. But it but is I, funny. I yeah. go back to I, somebody, I was listening to, so Jordan Peterson talking about that the other day, and, and I had a different perspective, so my mind immediately went there. Sometimes I'm like a squirrel, guys. I grab hold of something <laughs> and go. But, um, but the difference is, so if you've got a, a half a million dollars in the bank, just to pick a round number, you know, four, five years ago, you were earning 5000 a year. Today, you're earning 25000 a year, mm -hmm. right? 5% mm -hmm. CD. So people are spending that money. Mm -hmm. So it, mm -hmm. it's a very interesting time. Um, there's no instant gratification in the investing process. If it is, it doesn't last very long. But, you know, we, I'm seeing signs of unbelievable euphoria. People are speculating. They don't realize they're speculating, but hey, it's working right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we'll see if, if it can stand the test of time. So. Can we share a, 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 a YouTube channel? That you, oh, yeah. I, I want to I share this with people because I have a friend. She's, she's kind of like my bestie, bestie, bestie who is a YouTube addict. I might be a YouTube addict too, but but check out my YouTube. We have two channels and all the shows we produce here go to YouTube and then I do little blippets and I do things with interesting people, with the babies, with animals, with different things. YouTube is fun to watch and so I applaud YouTube for doing what they do and offering a, an avenue. Tell us about this. Yeah, so what I was sharing with Sherry earlier was there. there's an individual that, that we had met through mutual acquaintances. They approached us because the good thing about what we do is we run a risk managed portfolio. Mm -hmm. The bad thing about what we do is we sure. run a risk managed yeah. portfolio. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and here's the other side of that. If you're a buy and hold investor, the good thing about that is you're a buy and hold investor. The bad thing is you're a buy and hold investor. So mm -hmm. every strategy has its weakness, but basically, Chris Martinson, Dr. Chris Martinson has been one of those individuals that's committed his life to try to wake people up to some of the things that are taking place in society and warn individuals and try to teach them to be resilient over time, mm -hmm. okay? So he started a, a, a company called Peak Prosperity, which is a, a, 
uh, YouTube channel, uh, talked about economics over the years, and, and quite frankly, he took a lot of heat over the, his, his stance on COVID, the vaccinations, because he told goes, the truth. Because he told he the told truth. He told the truth. And he yeah. was he was I think he was a pathologist if I remember correctly. So he understood what was going mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. And he warned people and you know it took a couple of years, but we're now seeing that he was right. The truth. He was right. The, <laughs> the truth, truth is coming out. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so so he's met a group of individuals and some doctors that came through that started the F L C C, which is um, a group of doctors that basically said, look, you know, I spent my entire time trusting everything that was put out to me, but now there's other hands and influences and agendas in, so they're going back and really doing the research. So he, he, just, the money. he just put something yeah. out, yeah, follow the money. Follow the well, money. Well, I mean, you, you take uh, Charlie Munger, which is Warren Buffett's uh, partner. Some will say that Charlie Munger isn't as well known as what uh, Warren Buffett is, but he's the actually, you know, the majority of the brains behind their success. Mm -hmm. He said, show me the incentive mm -hmm. and I'll show you the outcome. Mm -hmm. And employers do this with you. If any of you are working, I mean, you go wait tables, you have to provide good customer service. Well, I mean, nowadays you, you, you don't get You're customer lucky service if you get that a, often. Yeah. But no, that's one area. I, I, I'll tip 10%. If you give me horrible service and you're grumpy, I'm going to tip you 10%. Mm -hmm. If you do good and give me good service, I'm going to tip you 25%. Mm -hmm. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not that, yeah. you know, but yeah. anyway. Yep. So uh, I was sharing with Sherry, he put out, he interviewed a guy by the name of Dr. Paul Merrick, M-A-R-I-K. Uh, and uh, can I reduce my cancer risk by 60%? Mm -hmm. So one of the things the medical profession doesn't do a whole lot of today is talk about nutrition. I mean, most doctors are not educated on nutrition, mm -hmm. right? So he's just saying, hey, these are the things that we've learned and this is proven information that's out there that's in the, in, in, you know, I don't understand enough about the medical field to regurgitate exactly what he said, but they're, they're letters. We call them white papers, but they're not, they're peer reviewed papers is what they are. You know, independent studies, you know, actual studies instead of telling you we're gonna do something. But anyway, what's interesting is he's sharing his journey and then he shares some of that data to try to help. Now, normally Chris will use this behind his paywall for his paid subscribers mm -hmm. but he put that on out on YouTube because it was such great information so if you get a chance I think it came out uh, there's already been 500 he's got 512,000 followers five days ago it came out so if you go to YouTube and you Google you know peak prosperity you can look through there can I reduce my cancer risk by 60 percent or more mm -hmm. find out with Dr. Paul Merritt so that, um, yeah and we all you know, want to do that because it's pretty interesting and I have no clue you know I mean it's interesting because I just literally started listening to this over the past couple of days so I've not done any research but mm -hmm. I know Chris enough to know he doesn't put something out there unless he he knows that stands it's in, behind yeah it. unless he stands behind it and, yeah. he, and he's a good guy he's a yeah. good guy yeah. and he's a courageous guy because he's willing to to say things now that people are, are not and that's how why old I'm, a I'm gentleman honored is to, he? How uh, old you know I haven't asked Chris how old he is okay. he's probably okay. uh, mid 50s late 50s okay. yeah so, so, so we, we all listened to the foolishness, the nonsense, the craziness that was shoved down our throat, shoved down our throat, shoved down our throat. And now we're following the money and finding out that we've followed things that didn't make any sense. Today, maybe it would make some sense. I am going to have a PET scan because my mother's cancer traveled to three other areas in her body. Mm -hmm. And I've been having some problems. And I am going to assume that this PET scan is great, but mm -hmm. I'm trying to drink more water, eat healthier, do the things that we fight cancer. We have that genetic disposition that's already there. We can't do a thing about it. Can't change who my parents were. But at the same time, listen to people like this that we can trust. Yeah. And we can trust that he's, he's not doing this for all the money. He's doing this for the information to help us. Yeah, he's doing it because there are people who care. And, and, and here's the thing, most of, like I had a really big time debate with a doctor uh, over, cause, cause he was, we, he was in my face that the, the kids should be vaccinated. Vaccinated, yes. And I just said, look, the kids have already been exposed. They've already come through it. Natural immunity, I think, is better. But anyway, we got to talking about some of the alternative uh, therapies. And, and I just kept asking questions. And it's funny because he went from being all in my face to just me asking questions. I didn't get mad because mm -hmm. I understand. Mm -hmm. He genuinely cares about what's doing, doing what's right, okay? Most of your doctors do. Most of us do. But we all have to trust the information that's coming to us. Mm -hmm. 
Now, me being the individual that I am, uh, I have to believe in what I recommend. So I left corporate, the corporate investment world a long time ago. Not because the company was 100% bad, but because there was enough of a conflict of interest with the clients that you I was You followed serving. what I read today. Yeah. Yeah, you followed I, what I read today. I wanted today. to be in the position. So one of my rules in the, in the people that we pay for research is they have to be independent and I pay them. So they have to stand alone on the subscribers that are there. So they mm -hmm. die by their advice. Mm -hmm. They don't have investment banking. They don't have all this. They live or die by the su success of their research. Right. And they've proven themselves over time to do well. So. Our doctors have to rely on the information that's coming out to them. So if you get into a situation where big pharma works its way into the upper echelon of the medical field, right, and, and they're manipulating the information that comes down for their own benefit, well, this doctor down here is not a bad person. They're just getting bad information, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So, and it amazes me. So you take the, the mainstream media like Pfizer, for example, is one of the largest contributors. And like I refuse to listen to Fox or CNN or anything like that. And I've never paid any attention to Tucker Carlson until he, until he left. And yeah, now you do. Now he's on Twitter, I actually listen to him. Mm -hmm. and, and uh, so he, he was talking the other day about just how much information, how, how many dollars go into the mainstream media. So on the other side, I listened to Joe Rogan's interview of Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Mm -hmm. I had the same perception, but Joe Rogan for three hours interviewed him, and he asks interesting questions, and that bothers me. I have a hard time watching Joe Rogan. You know why? <laughs> He's got that third eye thing on his eye, and I'm like, man, I feel like I'm entering the world of the occult when I start mm -hmm. listening. But he's genuinely curious, and he doesn't drive the conversation. He asks questions, and that's the mark of intellectual honesty, okay? Mm -hmm. Drop your preconceived ideas. The mark of an intelligent individual is to be able to take their idea and embrace another idea and basically say, okay, this is my side, but let me go see your side. Okay, mm -hmm. and that's how you find the truth because mm -hmm. we, we're all shaded by something. The truth is actually something you have to search to find. So he interviews Robert F. Kennedy, and I, I mean, I don't know what else he stands for, but, but if he actually gets the ticket and ends up on the other side, although I don't agree, I would actually be pleased with, with having that individual as a president uh, president sure. because they are standing up against the, he is willing to stand up against the interests that are ravaging our health and our lifestyle for their own individual gain. Exactly. Follow the money. Yeah, now sad. I, I, I guess y'all label me a conspiracy theorist now if you want to. <laughs> that's okay. I'm so glad that, that you shared that's that. That's not the case. And again, tell his, it's Pete. Yeah, it's Pete Prosperity. Pete Prosperity. Chris Pro Martinson. Okay. Uh, Chris Martinson. And he's Dr. Chris Martinson. Yeah, Dr. Chris Martinson. Okay. And, uh, but the easiest way is just to Google Peak Prosperity. You can click on that channel and you can go down. But look for, can I reduce my cancer risk by 60%? Because I thought that was pretty interesting. I've mm -hmm. shared it with about five or six people. And mm -hmm. I, I rarely share things now. And I don't know the, but I do know this, like the physician that I work with, you know, vitamin D is important. Right. And so I actually got a prescription. Description, and this is, y'all know this is no recommendation because I am not a medical professional. But my vitamin D was low, so mm -hmm. they prescribed me vitamin. And we did everything we could do. I get out in the sun. I just right. My vitamin hard. D was hard to do nothing. It was so terrible. So they prescribed me vitamin D too. And it was a marked difference mm -hmm. in my life, my energy level, everything since I've done that. Like mm -hmm. it's been quite life changing for yeah. me. Yeah, there you so, go. I mean, it may not work for everybody. Maybe there I'm just one go. of those weird people that the, what is it, the effect you believe it's going to work and it does? I placebo. can't think of that right. Placebo yeah. effect, yeah. yeah but yeah, hey, yeah. if it works, I it works. I remember the word, yay. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all, thank you for being with us today. And please check out Paul Kiker's investment company. He has been doing this for over 25 years yeah. now in our local yeah. area. And uh, he has been a, a great friend to me and a friend to many. So check him out. He is located right across from Brock Supply in Jasper, Georgia. Yeah. So your phone number you. is what? 706-253-7285. So, there you go. There you know, you hey, go. We're, we are not high pressure. We can, we, we can help people get through the times that are coming. Yep. Uh, you know, I'm, I can't guarantee you that we're going to beat everybody's returns or anything like that, but we're going to help you develop a plan, implement that plan, 
and point you in the right direction. So if you want to take a look at us, come talk to us. Um, if, it, if it's not meant to be, no worries. And we don't, I, we don't I, beat your door down. And I got down. a little word for his staff. They're fantastic. So, I, I yeah. am blessed. You are blessed with, with a great they staff. fantastic It is people. time for us to struggle out of here because we're going to go to Mike's and feed that baby. And then we're going to Dalton to show <laughs> 192 acres of land. So uh, y'all have a good, good day. Have a good, good weekend, and please get out and enjoy these tiny cities that we serve yes. from Ball Ground to Turtletown. I'll see you again soon.